Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way. And today we are going to compare a power electric scooter, the Wolf King, against a power electric unicycle, the Bigotti EXN. So, let's get into it. Wrong Way. All right, so in this comparison, we will compare these two devices based on 13 categories. And in each category, I'll tell you what the result was between these exact two devices. And also what is the trend all in all in this price category of EOCs and electric scooters. And before you say you can't compare apples to oranges, I'll tell you that these devices are more similar in their merit and their function than you think. I think that anyone can learn both to ride an electric scooter and an electric unicycle. They both get you from point A to point B in a quick fashion without any hassle, more connected to nature, without any emissions and taking up so much less space than a car. So both EUCs and e-scooters are phenomenal. They're great. And this video is more to show you guys what ownership, what day-to-day -day riding on both of these devices looks like. <laughs> Alright, let's start with the most obvious thing, which is control. On a power scooter, naturally, you have a handlebar, a stem, two wheels, two motors, a throttle mechanism, and many modes and settings you can adjust to suit your driving style. In real world, I have to tell you that Controlling a scooter in max settings all the time can be really tiring. That's why I use switch to a single motor, dual motor from time to time, and you can also adjust how hard it accelerates upon your throttle. As a result of that, you're actually never in your favorite setting or optimal setting on your scooter. You always need to switch in between single dual motor mode and different settings to suit your current ride needs. The EOC, on the other hand, is a cybernetic extension of your body. As my friend Tadju always says, you lean forwards to accelerate, you lean backwards to decelerate. Hell, if you, you can even go backwards. The controls of the EOC, once you learn it, become sec second nature, almost like a set a part of your body. And although you can select throughout the three modes of the pedal stiffness, so a more comfortable setting or a more, more sporty setting, in the hard setting you can ride both very comfortably and slowly and have fun at a slow speed, but if you want to just lean forwards and you accelerate amazingly quick. You brake by using the electric motor, you'll see braking distances later, and the device will tilt you back or make beeps once you reach a speed which would be dangerously fast. The freedom of mobility is amazing and having two free hands is one of the biggest benefits of having a EUC. You can pull a cart with it, you can open doors and did you even know that on the Jimmy Chang channel and on Alien Rides most of the awesome footage that you see of scooters is actually recording by a cameraman on a EUC? a couple of acceleration tests and at first the Wolf was faster than the EXN but this was actually my fault. I didn't lean hard enough so I had to put my shit together and just go for it. And I did manage to get ahead of the Wolf King and the acceleration time is actually one of the fastest ever recorded on my channel. 4.2 seconds to 50 kilometers an hour. And this isn't even the final form, because there are riders like Kuji Rolls or Phanimus, which can accelerate even quicker than that. We 
made a test just to 60 kilometers an hour because this is like the closest in day-to-day -day use. But if you want more tests with even quicker speed or even on a track, let us know in the comments and like the video. Now we will measure the top speed of these two devices. We have the same GPS tracker, so this will be pretty accurate. So the top speed was 70 kilometers an hour. 67.3 kilometers GPS. This time 67 and a half. So you can see that both of these devices are extremely fast. Sadly I couldn't get the EXN up to its highest potential because I had some issue with the tire alignment making vibrations over 65 kilometers an hour. So the wolf did manage to get this time 76.1. So in this case, it did win. As a tendency in power scooters, the top speed is around 80, maybe 80 something kilometers an hour. And EUCs, I would say a safe stop speed is up to 70, 75 kilometers an hour. All right, so we know that both e-scooter and EUC are really quick, but what about the braking? Breaking from around 50 kilometers an hour, I managed to be just a meter behind the scooter. Pretty nice. Okay, in, in terms of safety in day-to-day -day riding, so around 50, maybe max 60 kilometers an hour on the scooter, uh, the most thing you have to watch out is bigger holes uh, in the street because the tire might just fall in there. And maybe even more important is to not uh, have your hands off the handlebar at any time, because if you just feather the throttle at some point and you have the other hand somewhere else, you'll mash the throttle, the scooter will go, go in the other direction and you will fall. That's how I broke my wrist on the Cabo Mantis scooter. You have to also watch out with the dual motor mode if you take a turn more sharply because the front tire might lose grip, especially when it's wet outside. And all in all, if you just ride the scooter carefully and don't accelerate that hard, I think it's pretty safe on the road, but I wouldn't say it's the most comfortable and uh, in case of a fall, uh, you might just fly over the handlebars or uh, it might just hit you in with some point. There's a, there's a whole big surface area to it. In terms of safety on the EUC in day-to-day -day use, the most thing you have to watch out is uh, potholes and also bumps on the road. So at first, uh, maybe the 200, 300 kilometers, you will not feel that safe on the road. But after that, you'll regain more confidence and you'll feel safer on it. Uh, the big tire helps a lot with imperfections. And in case of a fall, it's awesome because you can wear actually wrist guards and it's comfortable to wear wrist guards on an EUC. So if you fall, if you see just go somewhere and then you can slide on the road. I had many crashes actually on EUC, but I ride very hardcore. And uh, in uh, just one of them, I, I broke my wrist. And this was because I didn't see a curb in the night. So even if I was on a scooter, probably the same thing would happen. I feel like the EUC also does have more grip and you can adjust the turning and the acceleration and braking better, but it's also, of course, not immune to all road surfaces. So when going on mud, you have to really watch out not to turn too swiftly. And one big downside of the EUC is, of course, that if something fails or if there's a short, you will just fall. There is no other way. When selecting a EUC, also be sure to check their waterproofing because some are weather better waterproofed and other are worse. But in my case, in terms of like waterproof wheels, I never had a cutoff just for some random reason. 
but in a couple of situations I overpowered the wheel at a very high speed and then it cut off on me. In the meantime, I learned what is uh, the issue and how to prevent it, and I didn't have a cutoff ever since. So if you want to check out what a cutoff is, just feel free to check out uh, the video linked in the corner. So yes, in terms of safety, I would say yes at first. If you start riding out on a scooter, you will feel safer and you will be actually safer. But after a while, I think they're actually pretty similar. In terms of waterproofing, in this exact case, I would say that the Wolf is better than the EXN. But all in all, uh, other electric unicycles are really, really well waterproofed, even with um, IP ratings like Emotion. And I would say in the grand scheme of things, EUCs are a bit better water sealed than, uh, than electric scooters. On the scooter, you have to sometimes tighten screws to avoid stem wobble, um, you have to obviously change tires, you have to um, change brake discs, which are on the other side, and brake calipers. Um, and all in all, I think there's way, way, way more maintenance on scooters than on EUCs. On EUC, you just have the tire, which you need uh, to change from time to time. And other than that, not really much else unless you have a crash or unless something happens to the EUC then there's pretty much no maintenance at all just a tire or in some cases tightening a axle shim but that's every like three to four thousand kilometers I love that about EUCs that there's just no maintenance required at all pretty much the Wolf Warrior stands I think around two thousand seven hundred dollars and it has worse specs on paper than uh, the Bigotti EXN, which is for around 2,250 euro on uh, my e-wheel. So yeah, all in all, with the same specs, with the same battery, the EUC will always be cheaper. And in this category, the Wolf is a rather stiff scooter. It does have suspension, you can see about the travel here. But on a badly paved road when there's just a bit of potholes or just going off-road it's not really comfortable As, especially the stem uh, gets a lot of vibrations through your hands and of course you have to hold the scooter actively to um, not fall off of it it also has way smaller tires as you can see than the Bigotti XN. these are 11 inches this is a 20 inch tire so naturally a lot more vibrations get through it and it picks up a lot of the smaller imperfections on the road the Bigotti EXN and EUCs in general mostly have no suspension although there are some that have and these are extremely comfortable but even without suspension the huge tire takes the edge off a lot of imperfections I think it's way more comfortable off-road and because you don't have to actively hold on to a handlebar you just get the vibrations transmitted through your feet so sometimes it's just enough to bend your knees a little and then you get a lot more comfort and I gotta tell you just going off-road going through a bad quality road I feel much safer much better on a EUC than on a scooter and the Wolf King has a pretty substantial set of front lights, pretty good. It also has a horn, which is really loud. Um, in terms of other features, there's a mood lighting on the sides, just a bit of more front light action, and also a, t you can show here, a tail light with a brake light, a display which shows you the speed, and this is also adjustable. And here also have a button for the horn <laughs> and the light. There's three modes to the lighting unit, a bright one, a more dimmer setting, and a strobe setting. And this is basically it. Here on the EUC, you have a front daytime running light, another light with three settings, also a brake light, which is flashing. Not the brightest one, but the other ones have it a bit better. Uh, here on the top, you have the on-off switch, a GX16-5 um, port. So this port is, I think, a bit better than on the Wolf. You can also charge your phone, which I think is not possible on the mini motor display. No. It also has a set of Pretty amazing speakers. These are one of the best speakers fitted to a EUC till now, which I've heard. Um, also trolley handle, lift switch to stop it spinning when you lift it up. And of course, 
one very important thing is the app support. So in the app, I can track everything. I can track my speed, my total mileage. I can adjust alarms. I can adjust the feeling of the ride. And the app just lets you configure your EUC so much, like alarms. Uh, you can have an automatic light, which turns on when you ride. Limit mode, you can turn on your speed limit. And yeah, here's the riding mode. You can log all your data. You can see how fast you are going. I don't know, 30 minutes ago. <laughs> you can see yourself on a map and also find other riders in the nearby area. So in terms of tech and features, the EOC is the clear winner here. The EOC also charges faster. It takes nine hours with the stock charger to charge it up fully and it can go down to three to four hours with a single fast charging unit. The Wolf Warrior charges 20 hours with its stock charger. With two chargers, you can charge it up, so many charge words, in around 10 hours and maybe even faster with an optional accessory. I think you see where this is going. The Wolf is huge. It weighs 50 kilograms. You can lift it, but it's pretty much a hassle. And if you fold it, then it takes up a lot of space in your trunk. Um, the turning radius is that big. Wait. <laughs> and you basically have to leave it outside of the store if you, uh, if you want to go have some shopping. The cool thing is if they let you in, you have a huge space here to put some big bags or even, I don't know, a washing machine. The Bigodi EXN is much lighter at 30 kilograms. It has a lift switch so it can easily carry it up, down, up and down. And of course, these pedals uh, tend to go out, but this is just a feature because I have different pedals in, but it's pretty in easy to just carry it up a flight of stairs, put it into a trunk and so on. It's very portable. And if you want to go inside the store, you can take out a trolley handle and just go inside the store. Can't do it with a electric scooter. Next thing about portability, yes, you can just spin this thing around as you want. As, and the turning radius is, well, that big. It's pretty easy <laughs> to go somewhere on a small ramp with a, a EUC, whilst on a scooter it's more difficult. It's also the matter of the handlebar. It's much wider than your whole body on a EUC or the foot plates. As mentioned before, EUCs at the same price of an e-scooter will have a bigger battery than the scooter. In this case, it's no exception. The Bigodi EXN has a 2700 watt hour battery, whilst the Wolf just a 2000 watt hour battery. It's nearly a third smaller. So the range here on the EXN is probably around 90, 100 kilometers, depending on your riding style. And I could drain the Wolf in 50 kilometers. The scooters are heavier, the controllers are less efficient because they use square wave controllers and not side wave controllers. So if you want to have more range, better get a EUC. In terms of build quality, Bigodi might not be the front runner here in the EUC category, but all in all, EUCs, especially like the Veteran Sherman, Emotion Wheels, King Songs, get really a lot, lot more miles in than e-scooters. The Wolf Warrior is also a pretty good scooter, but I think that all in all, if you want a more robust experience, something that will last longer, then yes, I think the EUC will do that. So this is it. These were my 13 categories. Let me know how you liked the video, if you would change something, and let me know if I left something out, if you find it interesting or not. And yeah, I hope in the future we can do a rematch with some other EUCs, other e-scooters, because it was really a lot of fun to make this video. So if you're still here, leave a like on the video, subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.